Welcome to MBZFL Lectures. I am Dr. Danish and today we will talk about ocular injuries. So there are two basic types of ocular injuries, the chemical injuries and the mechanical injuries. Chemical injuries are caused by acids, alkalis or irritants, whereas mechanical injuries are caused by foreign bodies which could be extraocular or intraocular. Furthermore, mechanical injuries are caused by contusion injuries as well as blunt trauma. The chemical eye injuries, they usually occur at home or at workplace and they are usually a result of a criminal assault. The type of chemicals which are under this category, they include acids, which has pH less than 7, irritants, which are neutral substances. We have alkalis, which have pH of more than 7. Now, chemical eye injuries are urgent emergencies and they must be treated promptly. Now, the degree of damage by these chemical injuries depend upon the type of chemical, especially its pH, and the time period for the contact, and how the injury is treated initially in the emergency department. Then the damage can vary from mild discomfort to complete blindness. Now, first of all, we'll talk about the alkalis. These are those chemical substances which has a pH of more than 7 and it is maximum to 14. Greater the pH, greater the ability to penetrate towards the deeper structure, greater the damage it will cause. Now, alkalis are most dangerous amongst all of the chemicals because they have high penetrating ability and cause both external as well as internal eye damage. Now, the mechanism of action of alkalis is that they cause necrosis and occlusion of the vessels and deeper epithelial destruction. Now, the most common substances which are alkali, they include sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, fresh lime, which is found in cement and plaster, and ammonia, which is present in cleaning agents. Now, further talking about the acids. They are those substances which has a pH of less than 7 and lower the pH, greater will be the damage. But acids are less damaging as compared to alkalis because they have much less penetrating ability which leads to only superficial and external eye damage. Now, this is because of the coagulation of proteins which acid causes which prevents their further deeper penetration. Now the most common substances which are acid, they include sulfuric acid which is found in car batteries, acetic acid which is found in the nail polish remover and hydrofluoric acid, the most potent acid, it is found in glass polish. Furthermore, talking about the irritants, these are those substances which has a neutral pH and they tend to cause more discomfort to eye than actual damage and they include household detergents and the pepper spray. Pepper spray causes significant pain, but it usually affects the eye or it rarely causes any damage to the eye. Now, the symptoms of chemical burn to the eye would be redness and edema, burning sensation in the eye, and severe pain in the eye. Now, the signs of chemical burn to the eye include burn marks to other parts of the face because, as we already talked about, that Chemical eye injuries are a result of criminal assault, so the acid or alkalis which are thrown over to the face of the patient will also affect eyes and other parts of the face. But in the eye, cornea and conjunctiva being the most superficial structures will get affected and they get necrosed and their epithelium gets sloughed off. Now, the deeper damage can also occur in case of alkalis to iris and lens, necrosis and destruction of the epithelium will lead to sloughing off of the protective layers which will lead to these complications which include corneal perforation, corneal scarring and corneal ulcer formation. Because of this perforation, there will be secondary bacterial infection and because of damage to different parts, for example, the lacrimal passages, there will be absence of lacrimal fluid, which will lead to dry eye further complicating the condition. And glaucoma can occur because of damage to the trabecular meshwork. The management of chemical eye injuries. It has an emergency treatment. 
the medical treatment and surgical treatment. In emergency, we have to irritate the eye with normal saline for 15 to 20 minutes, neutralize the chemical if it is known, with cotton swab remove any chemical material which is visible and remove the dead tissue from the eye or the face. Then comes the medical treatment. It has two parts again, the topical and oral. In topical medical treatment, we have antibiotic drops for infection. We have cycloplegic drugs like atropine, which relieves the pain. And we can also give the patient with steroid for seven days, after which we can use NSAIDs. Now further, we can give ascorbate to reduce inflammation and tetracycline eye ointment as a collagenase inhibitor. Now, as far as oral medications are concerned, we will be giving analgesics for pain relief, tetracycline for the prevention of infection, and vitamin C for the reduction in inflammation. Furthermore, we have surgical treatments like limbus stem cell transplantation, amniotic membrane graft, and keratoplasty. Now, we will talk about the mechanical injuries which are caused by foreign bodies, maybe extraocular or intraocular. Then we have contusion injuries and blunt trauma. First of all, talking about the extraocular foreign body, the types include inert substances, editants, and organic materials. Organic materials like wood, editants include iron and copper, and inert substances include gold and silver. But the most common sites of damage include epithelium of the cornea and bulbar part of the conjunctiva. The clinical features would be mild discomfort to severe pain, watering and redness and blurry vision. In management, first of all, we have to localize the foreign body and for that would require a very good source of light and a magnifying glass. Then for the removal, we have to use topical anesthesia and irrigation, that is washing of the eye with normal saline. Now we can use copper tipped applicator for superficial foreign bodies, foreign body spud for superficial embedded foreign bodies, and we can also use magnet for deep seated metallic foreign bodies. Now we also have to use medication after the foreign body has been removed and we will be using antiseptic dressing and certain amount of antibiotics and analgesics in case of pain. Now talking about intraocular foreign body, again the types are the same, inert substances, irritants and organic materials, but the common sites differ. Intraocular foreign body is if present in the anterior part of the eye, it will be damaging iris and lens and if it is present posteriorly, it will be affecting vitreous humor and retina. Now the effects of intraocular foreign body depends upon the type of material, its size, whether present anteriorly or posteriorly, the position, the amount of destruction it causes and the time period for contact. Now, these effects are produced by the mechanisms which are the mechanical effect, that is the mere presence of a foreign body, the infection which occurs after its entry into the eye, and the reaction to foreign body which can vary from no reaction to severe and specific reactions which we will talk about in next slides. So now we will talk about the reactions and number one specific reaction to the eye is sidrosis bulbi. It is caused to iron and it occurs from two months to two years on its presence in the eye. Now iron undergoes electrical dissociation and the ions which are produced they combine with the proteins and they cause damage to the epithelium. Now the iris becomes reddish brown, easy to remember as iron when it gets rusted has the same color. Now the epithelial and capsular damage will lead to cataract, trabecular meshwork damage leads to glaucoma formation, retina develops pigmentation owing secondary to the deposition of these iron ions along with the proteins. Now all of this, if not treated properly, can even lead to blindness. Now the second type of specific reaction is known as calcosis. It occurs to copper. Now the copper ions 
gets deposited under the membranes and produce specific symptoms like in the cornea. Case of Fleischer rings occur as golden brown ring in the decimus membrane which is one of the membranes in the structure of cornea. Lens develop sunflower cataract due to deposition of copper in the posterior part of the capsule and the retina becomes golden plaque on its posterior pole. Now the management. We will have history from the patient to identify the nature of intraocular foreign body, examination to identify the size and site of entry and exit, then we will localize by good source of light and a magnifying glass. Yet, if the visualization is not possible, we can have indirect visualization by means of x-ray, ultrasound or CT scan. But most importantly, MRI is contraindicated in case of metallic foreign bodies. Foreign body which is present in the anterior segment is removed by the limbal approach. Foreign body present in the posterior segment of the eye is removed by means of magnet and forceps and after removal, antibiotics for infection and analgesics for pain are given. Thank you very much for listening. If you are new to my YouTube channel, kindly subscribe and share with your friends.